about uh, today, this morning, we hear a lot explicitly or explicitly about party development, about systemic regime stability, democratization, and as you can see, these are the phenomena I'm going to talk about in, in, in this presentation. Ever since the publication of Huntington's seminal piece in 1965, scholars have mentioned that institutionalization has positive effects for the survival and the consolidation of democracy, and that the lack of institutionalization, the lack of stability, will lead to the collapse of political regimes and democracy. However, in my view, or at least until very recently, some questions remain, and I'm going to deal with two main questions. The first one is, is the institutionalization of political parties, party development, that leads to the consolidation of democracy, meaning party institutionalization as the stability of the political parties as organization with infused value rudeness in society, or the institutionalization of the party system, meaning the stability, the predictability, the routinization in the way political parties interact, collaborate, compete with each other. The other question is, to what extent is this stability, this institutionalization important for this democratic consolidation? Is, are we talking about a necessary condition, meaning that democracy cannot consolidate with institutionalized political parties or party systems, or is as important as to become a sufficient condition, meaning that it's enough that institutionalization of these parties or party systems takes place to democracy to for, uh, for democracy to survive. In the party systems and government observatory, you have some flyers at the end that I'm director. We have tried to answer these questions. And the main result of our research, where we look at all democracies in Europe since 1848, so basically, you know, since the French Second Republic onwards, 2015, 2016, we have, you know, basically uh, uh, a couple of outcomes. The first one was an article published just last month in West European Politics, also a book that is currently under review. And, but I will focus here basically on the main findings of, of this article. And one of the main findings is that contrary to what scholars have thought, at least in Europe, political parties, the institutionalization of political parties are, as organizations are neither necessary nor a sufficient condition for the consolidation of democracy. I'm sure you know this will come as a surprise to some of you, but this is what comes from analysis of 64 different party systems and you know 165 years of democratic experience. In fact, you know, think about you know cases where you know democracy collapsed, like in the Weimar Republic, Austrian First Republic, Greece during the interwar period, despite the fact that political parties are as organizations were rooted in society. Also, we know from Eastern Europe, but if we think about the French Third Republic, if we think about Ireland in the interwar period, they managed these democracies to survive, despite the fact that in those times, political parties were still very weak and were not institutionalized. So this is one of the findings. But on the same time, I found out that institutionalization of party systems, of the interaction, of the patterns of interaction, of the collaboration, the way political parties you know, relate to each other, is essential for the survival of democracy. In this table, you have the 64 party systems I was talking about. You have, for example, France, you have second, third, fourth, fifth republic. They are considered to be different party systems. That's why you get 64. What you see here, if you look at you know, what is now being portrayed, a lot of party systems in, of democracies in Europe managed to survive despite the fact that they were not institutionalized, meaning that party system institutionalization is not a necessary condition for the survival of democracy, contrary to what a lot of scholars, especially scholars in Latin America and other new democracies, have said. 
this is not to say that party system is not essential and important, because what I discovered is that with two exceptions, in every single democracy where party system is institutionalized, democracy managed to survive, meaning that it was sufficient condition for the democracy not to collapse. Moreover, and what is a very inter interesting, let's say, turn, party system institutionalization, so the institutionalization of these interactions, these patterns of collaboration between political parties, is a necessary condition, the lack of this party system institutionalization, sorry, is a necessary condition for democracies to collapse. So you see the nuances of the relationship between institutionalization and democracy. And we see how political parties, the utilization of political parties per se, are not so important, at least they don't have a direct relationship with the survival of democracy. While the institutionalization of these party systems is, in different ways, essential. And what is interesting, you have here a table that looks at every different democratic wave, you know, since basically the 19th century, what we see is that, you know, this relationship of party system institutionalization is not only important in global terms, you see here the difference, 53, more than 53% of the democracies that uh, survived had institutionalized party systems, while only, you know, 9.5%, you know, in those cases that collapse. So the difference is very clear. You have this difference in every single period so no matter, you know, the period we look at, the relationship, you know, is reversed. It's true that, you know, in the later times, this difference or this importance of party system institutionalization has, you know, a bit reduced, but, you know, as a whole, you know, it, it still persists. So summarizing this part of the presentation, party system institutionalization is sufficient, so it's so essential that with just having the institutionalization of party systems, democracy will survive in that country. And in those countries where it does not man they do not manage to have a socialized party system, the probability of you know democracy to collapse is very high. To the point, and this comes from the from the book I'm uh, writing with uh, Sholden Jedi from Central European University. If you look at the graph on the left, the probability that a democracy collapses with a non-institutionalized party system is 3.5 times higher than, you know, when the democracy has an institutionalized party system. And this is proportional over time. Does this mean what I said, that political parties are not important? Yes. The institutionalization of political parties is still important. Only that the relationship between, you know, party institutionalization, the utilization of political parties as organizations, and the consolidation of democracy is not, does not have a direct component. You see here, you know, this graph plots basically or relates, you know, the two phenomena, party institutionalization, party system institutionalization. And you see almost a linear relationship. What does it mean? This means that parties themselves are important for the institutionalization of democracy, which is, which is important and essential for the consolidation of democracy. And why I'm saying all this? Well, because this has, of course, important implications in the way we see, you know, party development, party system institutionalization, and party aid. Because the thing is, you know, we have been debating, you know, there were, you know, positive views, negative views yesterday. The thing is that, you know, when we look at party aid, can we really talk about a success story? Well, I think that if we look at cases like Ukraine, if we look at cases like Russia, I don't think, in my view, that we can say that it was a success story. Not to talk about cases like collapse even before, Armenia, Belarus. So, it's important that we look at these findings when we try to develop new strategies on the way we have to support party development and party system institutionalization. The thing is that yesterday Alina was, you know, showing us how political parties, you know, party system represent, representative institutions like government, parliament, are hated by the majority of the population. However, my research shows that political parties and party systems are important. 
I think that uh, the, 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 the comparison of Tunisia and Egypt clearly show, you know, I mean, never mention the word institutionalization, but you talk about balanced political spectrum, part of the system institutionalization. The distinction between how the secularist parties relate to each other in a stable and predictable manner, you know, splits, merges, changes in Egypt, while, you know, there was a tripolar party system developed in Tunisia, in my view, you know, has important, you know, implications. So party system institutionalization and the association of parties needs to be supported. But it's important to distinguish that they are important in different ways, that we have to focus on the stability of the party system. And I think this could bring these two different approaches that Nick was mentioning yesterday, about issues and institution. In the institutionalization of the party system, in my view, you could bring together this, this two. But you also need to understand, like Jonathan mentioned in relation to the fact that parliaments are not, an, the strength of parliaments are not a necessary condition for you know, the consolidation of democracy. We need to understand you know, that party system institutionalization is not a necessary condition, but it's a sufficient condition. That requires a multi-party work approach, like it was mentioned yesterday by Bjorn and also by Nick, where all parties work together, something that I think the Westminster Foundation for Democracy is really good at. And we need to make, we need to make party aid conditional to this purpose. Because as I have shown you, this, the development of parties is important, but only in a indirect, indirect manner, you know. Richard Jones was talking about red lines. Well, it's conditionality, you know, in other words. We have to make this aid conditional to help, you know, parties to socialize, but with the aim of the socialization of the party system, because as I showed you, this is what really is essential for the consolidation of democracy. And finally, of course, you know, and I think what I hear this morning, I have some funds here. We need to support, continue the support of parties and party systems over time, because if something has come up in the, in, in, in the book I'm writing, is that, you know, institutionalization, you know, requires time. And we need to support political parties and party systems for the different reasons I mentioned, you know, over time, you know, and go over, you know, what Dennis mentioned yesterday, the famous second election. We have to go over because it's always necessary to support in order to consolidate democracy. Thank you very much.